Good morning, class. I'm, I'm glad I was finally able to re-record this. I, I had to have period one and two join live this morning because I didn't record audio. So I'm getting the audio this time, and I'll post this for period four and five, and also put links in periods one and two. So I apologize for that. I'll make sure that my microphone is turned on in the future. So let's start. Um, I'm going to start by talking about a tool that we've been using a lot and it, it's based on the fact that if I take something and I multiply it by the number one I don't change it right so if I evaluated that 8, eight plus 4 is 12 that's 12 over 12 well 12 times 12 over 12 is 12 times 1 which is just 12 and I could do this you know in all sorts of ridiculous fashions again and again. Every single time I add a new entry here, I'm just being careful that what the numerator is is the same as the denominator. And because of that, every single time that I write a new one, Right? I'm, I'm still just looking at the number 12. And it doesn't matter how often I do this, 12 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is still the number 12. Now, where we've used this recently is by considering uh, negative exponents and thinking, hey, I want to get rid of the negative exponents. So if I look at that, I can get rid of this, the fact that it's 3 times x to the negative second by multiplying by the number 1. And the number 1 I would pick in this instance is x squared over x squared. Now, let's like make no mistake, right? This thing that I just did, because the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator are both x squared, I'm multiplying by the number 1. But I selected this one specifically because x to the negative second times x to the positive second is x to the 0 power and x to the 0 power equals 1. So the things that I've circled in green become the number 1. So my numerator ends up being just the number 3 and my denominator, well if I expand it, I've got three copies of this so I can write it's 2x squared times another 2x squared times another 2x squared times and I gotta bring one more x squared down, right? This, this x squared has to make its way into the the denominator as well. So 2 times 2 times 2 is the number 8. And then I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 factors of x. So this is 3 over 8 times x to the 8th power. So this is what this becomes, right? This is the simplified version of this original expression. And we got there by multiplying by the number 1. Now I want to think about a different number one, something a little bit different. Let's say that I take this and I say, hmm, here's the number 12, and I'm going to multiply that by, I'll do this, um, there, I'll multiply that by that number one. And you're saying, Ms. Roberts, Ms. Roberts, that is not the number one. That's seven over one, which is the number seven. And I say, okay, fair point, right? However, I'm not going to change the numbers at all. I'm just going to write two words up here. Now, is it not true that seven days is the same thing as one week, right? It, it is. Seven days is one week. So, I want us to use this idea today that there are giant ones that involve units. So some other ones that I can think of just off the top of my head, if I have um, 60 seconds, that's the same thing as one minute. Um, it is true that if I've got uh, 24 hours, that is one day. Um, a gallon, one gallon is the same thing as four quarts. Um, and for every single one of these we write down, it's not just the giant one that I'm writing, but it's reciprocal is also true. It's also true that one day is the same thing as 24 
hours. So we're going to make use of these giant ones and the, the knowledge that I can multiply by one repeatedly and not change an expression's value, just change the form that that's in. So in the math notes in today's section, in section 2.2.4, there is a collection of giant ones. And they may not be written as ratios like this, but if it says, for example, one meter is the same thing as 100 centimeters, right? you can write that down. This next problem that we're going to do is going to need one of these. Specifically, it's going to need one that I think is kind of, I don't know that it's necessarily something that we would know, but we're going to need either 1 inch is the same thing as 2.54 centimeters or 2.54 centimeters is the same as 1 inch. One of those two. So again, if you're wondering, geez, what's some of the ones that I have available, look look in the, the math notes uh, section so you can think about some of those. Ones that are unusual or that you may not know, I will include if I give you a, an assessment of any form. But for example, the meters to centimeters, kilometers, meters. Um, most of those metric things are 12 feet. No, I'm sorry, 3 feet is a yard. Uh, 12 inches is a foot. Some of those I'm going to I'm going to assume, you know, if if you've never heard of them, um, you're, it's fair to ask me um, even during a testing time and I could maybe share with you a giant one. So let's take a look at this. In the big race, Leslie rode at a rate of 2 meters every second. So let me write that as a, as a rate 2 meters per second. 2 meters every second. However, you want to know how fast she was going in not those units. You want to know how fast she was going in feet per second. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to, this is going to be the first example that I show you of this technique. But one of the things I like to do is like I write, I like to write my target rate off to the far right. So I'm just going to say that I want to get this expressed in feet per second. And I just kind of proceed from there. Now, the one giant one that I said that we're probably going to want to make use of is the fact that I can either have one inch is the same thing as 2.54 centimeters, or I can flip that either way, right? One inch is the same as 2.54 centimeters. Because I need to go from this imperial units, right, feet into the metric system. So I'm going to have to convert between those two. So let's go ahead and start with the meters. Um, I know that I can multiply this by the giant one, but the fact that there is uh, there's exactly 100 centimeters in one meter. So if you look what I've written down here, this is equal to one, right? They're the same length. It's the same distance. 100 centimeters is the same thing as one meter. So I've written, I've multiplied by one. What's nice about this is the fact that now in my numerator over here, I've got meters right? And in my denominator over here, I've got meters. So if you look at this now, what this is now saying as two meters per second is the same thing as 200 centimeters per second, right? The only units I'm left with right now are centimeters and seconds. The next giant one that I'm going to use is the one that I've lifted from our math notes, and it's this one. One inch is the same thing as 2.54 centimeters. And again, you'll see the same pattern here. I've got centimeters and I'm, I've got centimeters in this denominator. And when you have centimeters over centimeters, right, a centimeter over a centimeter, that's equal to one. So that's gone. And this, this value that I put here is also equal to one, right? One inch is the same as about 2.54 centimeters. So I've multiplied by one and I've used this fact that there's a one inside of that now to cancel out some units again. I need to do one more of these because my, remember my target goal is to get to feet per second. So the last one I'm going to multiply this by is, let's see, I want my inches I want my inches to go away, so I'm thinking I'm going to put inches in the bottom. I'm going to pre-populate that with inches, and I want feet on the top. Now, why, why am I saying I want inches in the bottom? Because I'm observing that I want these inches to cancel with these inches. So I need inches in the top, inches in the bottom. And then I go ahead and I need to make this truly a giant one because it's not one, right? A foot is not an inch, but however, one foot is the same thing as 12 inches. So if you take a look at this now, the only units that I have left 
in my denominator I've got seconds and in my numerator I've got feet so I've correctly got it expressed here feet per second now it's just a matter of doing the arithmetic uh, in my numerator you can see I've got the number two in fact I'll I'll just explicitly say this the number two it doesn't show a denominator however it is two over one so I'm going to multiply the two from the numerator times the 100 from the numerator and in the denominator you can see I've just got a one a one and then I've got 2.54 and I'm going to multiply that by the number 12 2 times 100 over 2.54 times 12. I'm not great with the arithmetic. However, I do know that this is the number 200. Let me grab a calculator. 2.54 times 12 it gives me 30.48. And if I take the 200 and I divide it by 30.48, I get 6.5. Five, six. So my answer is 6.56 feet per second. And again, this was obtained just by multiplying by these ones to manipulate the units from one form to another. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Turbo the Snail from the Redwoods. This is the snail that I saw. Actually, it was four years ago now. So if I went back, it would be just Turbo's descendants. But uh, I have this picture here because this next problem, 77, is called a snail's race. So four students, Terry, Madeline, Matt, and Olivia, were working on different rate problems. They were preparing for the county fair snail race and knew their species of snail could travel could travel a whopping speed speed of eight feet per one hour. The snail race lasts only a few minutes, so they want to know how many inches their snail could travel, inches in one minute. Madeline spoke up, hey, I know there are 12 inches in a foot and 60, foot, 60 minutes in an hour, but I always get mixed about when I'm supposed to divide and when I'm supposed to multiply by these things. And I understand totally what she's talking about because I know exactly those unit rates that she mentioned, right? I know I, I, are those conversion factors. I know 12 inches is a foot. I know 60, min inches, min 60 minutes is an hour. But it's like, where do, where do we do this, right? So Olivia chimed in and says, hey, do you think we can try using ratios so we can remember when to multiply and when to divide? Let's list out everything we know. So it says here, list out the ratios you know about the snail race. So one of the things we know is that the snail is going in eight feet. Is it eight feet? Eight feet per hour, per one hour. Now, a couple things that I know is I do know that there's a relationship between feet and inches. I know that 12, not 12 feet, 12 inches is the same thing as one foot. And I also know that 60 minutes is the same thing as one hour, right? Those are all giant ones that I know. In fact, I could flip any of these, right? They don't have to be written this way. I could say one, one foot over 12 inches is the same. I could say one hour over 60 minutes is the same as well. But these are some things that I know about this problem. Uh, Madeline exclaims, I got it. And she shares with her group the following. Hmm, interesting, Madeline. So she says the rate we had was eight feet in one hour. And she multiplied that by 12 inches per one foot. And when she does that, she can see that this becomes 96 inches per one hour. And I do want to point this out, right? You can see that I've got feet in the numerator and feet, never mind the plural singular, feet as a unit in my denominator. So when I think about that, those are gone. And the only units I have left in my answer are I've got inches, inches per hour, per hour. And if I take and I multiply the 8 times 12, I get 96 for the top and 1 times 1 gives me one in the bottom. So how did Madeline come up with that? Well, I think I just talked through that, Mr. Roberts. So let's move on. Olivia, this is another friend, Olivia said, I think you're on to something, Madeline. Oh, how supportive is that? That's nice. We know that one foot equals 12 inches. So we can make a giant one out of that ratio. 
And she did, right? 12 inches is the same as a foot. Since we already know that multiplying by a giant one does not change the value, let's multiply the snail's rate of 8 feet per hour by a giant one. Olivia showed them her work. Oh, okay, okay. So 8 feet per hour and then times the giant one. It's beautiful. Now Matt said, okay, okay, okay. I like this and I want to rearrange these things. So if you look at what Matt's suggesting, he's saying, hey, look, I've got hours here and feet here. I just want to switch their locations. I want to swap out the, where they're at. So when I do that, I can very clearly see this giant one of a foot over a foot, right? Feet units over feet units, that's equal to one. So that's gone. So all I have now are inches per hour. So we end up getting inches per hour. And the book asks, why can Matt rearrange the terms like this? And I would just say, you know, if you're looking at the giant ones, if I have 3 times 4, and I'm dividing that by 4 times the number 5, I can see I've got 20 over 12. I'm sorry, 12 over 20, right? And I can clearly rewrite this as 5 times 4. I can clearly do this because multiplication is commutative, right? 5 times 4 is the same thing as 4 times 5. So I can definitely switch the order of those. And it kind of just makes it more clear for me to see the giant 1. I often don't do this when I'm doing the dimensional analysis. I'll just use a highlighter to mark that my units are really uh, canceling out with each other. Okay, Terry is concerned. That's nice. It's nice to have friends who show concern. Why is she concerned? She's concerned because they only know the snail's pace in inches per hour. In fact, if you think about it, they've got this down to 96 of the inches per hour, right? But um, they would like to know the pace in inches per minute. They want to know it in inches per minute. So what's the Snell's pace in inches per minute? Well, again, one of the giant ones that we talked about was the fact that, hmm, if I have one hour, that is the same as 60 minutes. And if you look at how I wrote that, right, it was not an accident that I decided to place my hours in the numerator here. In fact, the reason why I put hours in this numerator is, was because I had inches per hour over here and I wanted the hour over hour to form a giant one. So this thing that I've highlighted in this reddish color is a one. So if you look at it now, right, my only units now are inches per minute. And then the numerical value is 96 over 60, right? But if I grab my calculator and go 96 divided by 60, it says, hmm, that looks like 1.6. So I've got 1.6 inches per minute. This is my rate. My rate is now 1.6 inches per minute. Before, right, when we started this whole thing, we knew the snail's space and was it feet per feet per hour, right? But the race ink is not going to last hours. So we've taken feet per hour, and we've been able to convert that to inches per minute. OK, so that's kind of our technique. Let's move on to our next question. All right, back to the trike race. So now that the team has practiced dimensional analysis from the snails race, they want to convert Kristen's race rate in the big rate from 2 meters every 5 seconds into inches per second. Okay, so that's true. Yesterday she was going two meters every five seconds, but they would like that to be converted um, into inches per second, not meters per second. So they wrote down this giant one, and they're struggling with this just a little bit. And I want you to look at it and think if you can see why this is problematic for them. Again, what they have at the end is what they want, right? They want inches per second. But notice is what, what's happening here. If I take my meters, right, that will convert with meters. And then I've got my centimeters, and I want that to I want that to cancel with my other centimeters. But my problem is I don't have centimeters in this denominator. So the problem here is that when you're setting up this conversion, you need to make sure that your units will cancel out. So what I needed to do was flip this so that I had centimeters in the bottom, 
right? And I express my inches in the top. So this is a giant one. Clearly 2.54 centimeters over one inch is a giant one. But what we would need to use in this setting is one inch is the same thing as 2.54 centimeters. So if I replaced this giant one with this giant one instead, now you can see these centimeters that I have will cancel with these centimeters and that the units of my answer would be then inches, only inches in the top and seconds in the bottom. So when you're setting these up, make sure that you're structuring it in such a way so that your units will cancel as you bring in more giant ones. Okay, this is a subtle but important idea. Physical quantities are measured in things we call units. So units are things like inches, grams, hours, right? Those are all units that we can associate um, with, with a particular measurement. A dimension is a broader concept. So think dimension is kind of above these. And dimension has concepts such as length, mass, and time. So if we're thinking about, for example, length, there's a lot of things that we associate with length. We can talk about miles. We can talk about kilometers. We can talk about inches. We can talk about centimeters. Those are all examples of units that apply to length. We also have a lot of units that apply to mass. So for mass, we have things like um, pounds, kilograms, um, I don't know, a, t a ton. Those are all different masses. And then, um, mm, you know, I should be careful because there is the force and there's the mass. And I don't want to step on any physics teacher's uh, feet right now. So let me just back off from that because I'm thinking here, is pound a force or is pound a mass? What is the difference between those two? I'm going to stop talking, and I'll go back on to time, which I do understand. Time, we've got things like seconds, days, weeks, hours. So those are units that we can associate with time. Another dimension is mass, um, and it says the launch mass of the orbiter in 1999 was 338 kilograms. What was the launch mass of the Mars orbiter in pounds? Show your answer with the same precision as the original measurement measurement of the launch mass. So if you notice this, this was measured to the nearest whole kilogram. So we're going to report our answer to the nearest whole kilogram. So I'm just going to go ahead and write down that we have 338 kilograms. I'll just abbreviate that kg. And I'm going to want to convert this into pounds. And I'll abbreviate that LBS. I did look at the... Uh, math notes in this section and one of the things that I'm going to need is the fact that they told me that one pound is the same thing as 553.59 grams. It doesn't exactly get me to where I want to go but it's definitely a tool I can use because I know that I can move from kilograms to grams and that's going to be my first step. I'm going to go ahead and take the fact that I have 338 kilograms and I'm going to multiply that by the fact that 1,000 grams is the same thing as a single kilogram. So again, I've structured it like this and not the reciprocal because I want the grams from my starting value to cancel with the kilogram. So you can see these kilograms over this. And again, there's an implied there's an implied denominator of one here. Before we were starting with rates and when you have like things like kilograms per hour, you can see that the kilograms lived in the numerator. Right here I just have just kilograms, so those are living in the numerator. So now my answer is expressed in grams, and I have this other giant one that I read from the math notes section, and it tells me that 1 pound is the same thing as so many grams. So I'm going to go ahead and populate this fraction as well. And I know that I want grams in the bottom because I've already got grams in this numerator. And that's going to, not grams with an S, and that's going to leave my pounds for the numerator, it's LBS. So I could say one pound is the same thing as 453.59 grams. I got that 59 there. So the only units that I have left now, because these grams are going to cancel with these grams, is I just have pounds left. That's the only units left in this problem. So I can go ahead and do my calculations. The calculations are the numerator is going to be 338 times 1,000. 
And in my denominator, I'm going to multiply by 453.59. So if I go ahead and grab my calculator off screen here, 338 times 1,000. That's, yeah, 338,000. Divided by 453.59. And when I do that, I do get a decimal. It said, show your answer in the same precision as the original measurement. So it was to the nearest whole number, 338 whole kilometers. So I'm going to go ahead and round this. This number that I'm looking at my calculator screen is 745.16. But I'm just going to round this to the nearest whole number of pounds. So I'm going to write down my answer of 745 pounds. So that is the mass of the... Um, of the orbiter expressed in pounds. I am going to finish with this problem. This is problem 80 from our classwork today. And uh, I've just titled this Using Giant Ones, and it's about a leaky faucet. So it says a leaky faucet drips one fluid ounce, one fluid ounce of water every five minutes. And I would like to change that, so I'm going to express how much it leaks how many gallons it leaks per one year. So you can see that I'm having to change two sets of units, right? I'm going to have to change time, and I'm also going to have to change um, fluid ounces into gallons. So I've grabbed a couple giant ones from the textbook. So these were things that were on in the, the math notes section of this sec lesson, and I'm going to use those. But let's go ahead and start by writing the fact that I've got one fluid ounce and I'll just abbreviate this. I'll just write ounce, O-U-N-C-E. It's a one fluid ounce per, that's not the correct, I'll just write the word ounce, uh, per five minutes. And I'm going to handle time first because I think time is easier for me. I, I know most of those by heart. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I want to get my minutes to go to hours. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-populate. I want minutes in the numerator and hours in my denominator. And I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So now I'm looking at ounces per hour. Now I want to go to days. Uh, and I have to have hours now in the numerator. And I'm going to have days in the denominator. And I know that 24 hours is one day. And again, I'll, I'll show this, right? These minutes cancel with these minutes. These hours are gone with this hour. So right now I'm looking at ounces per day. And now I want to get to a year. And I'm just going to, I know that there's like the leap year and there's a quarter year every year. I'm just going to say that there are, um, there are 365 days per one year. And again, same pattern I'm following here. I want these days to cancel with this. So I'm left with um, ounces per year. So if I did the calculations right now, I know that the number is going to be expressed in ounces per year. In my numerator, I've got a 60, so I'm going to multiply 60 times 24 times 365. And I have to divide that by 5. So what I have right now is I have 105,120 ounces per year. So I was able to take care of the time part, right? Now I'm expressing my answer as in ounces per year, but I need to make the conversion and jump to gallons. And to do that, right, we're going to start with the fact that uh, eight fluid ounces is the same thing as one cup. So I can go ahead and say, oh, I'll put one cup in the numerator, and I'm going to put eight ounces, I think OZ I can do, eight ounces in the denominator, now I need uh, the cups to go away, so I can see that if I have four cups, that's the same thing as one quart. And then I can get my quarts to go away by noticing the fact that one gallon is the same thing as four quarts. So if I take a look at all of this, right, I can see that my ounces are going to cancel with OZ, those were ounces. Cups are going to go away with the cups. The quarts are going to go away with the quarts. And the only thing I have left in my numerator is gallons. And the thing that I have left in my denominator as far as units is years. So this answer that I have is clearly gallons per year. 
And the arithmetic, as I can see, I've got this 105,000 120 times 1 times 1 times 1 and in my denominator I've got times 8 times 4 times 4 so I know the number is going to be 105 120 divided by 8 times 4 times 4 or 8 times 16 which gives me 128 and if I take 105 120 and I divide that by 128 I'm looking at hmm I'm looking at 821.25 a quarter gallons per year. So I've taken the one fluid ounce of water every five minutes and I've converted that to how much water per year. It's 825.25 gallons per year. Well, that was 30 minutes and that's probably our longest lesson all year. Um, thank you very much. Um, I look forward to seeing you in class soon.